And a lot of them are branching out in genres, whereas a lot of them, first were they, oh, I only like to do action adventure. Or, I only like to do romantic comedy. And nowadays, I hear them branching out more and wanting to do, well, I, I thought I'd, you know, I, I thought I'd, you know, challenge myself, so I thought I'd do something a little different, so I'm doing a mystery. All right, yeah, and it's, it's nice to hear that now, that they're doing that. And I do think that, I think uh, it makes it, for, for age, a lot of the agents, it's not just looking at material and saying, What's, where's that big tent pole thing? It's also, what does this particular writer have? Do they have that, that um, what's the best word to use? Do they have that sense of adventure of wanting to go further with their talents as a writer, to go further and, and look at other pieces of material and write about something that is totally different than what's out there? That's interesting. How do you think they can tell that someone has that sense of adventure? I think just by talking to them and reading, what are you working on? You know, what is because they, they want to know what it is that you're working on. Oh yeah, if I'm just, if they give a one-line answer like, oh, I'm working on another action adventure, or I'm, I'm, well, you know, I like comedy, so I thought I'd do another comedy. I see. If you're only working on what one genre or one thing that they're that they that you that maybe you you did well on your first script and you're only working on that, yeah, they're glad to hear that, but they want to know that there's more. What else are you giving them that's going to be so different? Because, see, they have to sell it. They have to sell it. The uh, agents have to sell it to the producers, and the producers have to sell it to the, the distributors or the studios. So an openness and a willingness. If they see that you're too closed off, then mm -hmm. maybe they realize it's a pass just because down the, down the line, it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. Yeah. So other fatal errors a writer make, either even in, <laughs> in just how they present themselves or? Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, I feel that a lot of writers don't put enough, they don't invest enough in themselves in terms of, of getting out there and networking. Uh, most common excuses are, I don't live in Hollywood or I don't know somebody in the business, or you know, they, they, you know, they don't make that investment. Nowadays, with social media, you can be just as up to date as anybody else who lives in, in the city, because you, all you have to do is just be able to go on, online, develop a, a, a group. Like I said, there's writers groups that are online. And go to conferences, invest in yourself, and that's, I think that's one of, the, one of the best pieces of advice I can give to people. Consider investing in yourself. If this is something you want to do, if you're serious about it, you go, to a you go to college if you want to be an engineer or a doctor, then you have to invest in yourself if you're going to be a writer. Go to the writing conferences, or, or um, they now have a lot of them online. Do courses online. Uh, invest in, in getting together with other like-minded writers and going to writer retreats. or do, Just going out and looking at all the material that's out there and taking courses to, you know, to, to really further not just your, your writing, but to further your network. I, I don't like using the term network so much. I like to say building a community of contacts. And when you do that, it, it really makes a difference because that's where a lot of the uh, connections start getting made. You know, like there are people who were, I, I have clients where one of them, you know, got an agent and there was another, she heard that her boss or her, her agent, uh, that their agency was looking for somebody who had an action adventure piece. She remembered that the gal in her class, uh, in her group, had one. And so she got a synopsis and sent it to them. Now, they didn't buy it but they read the synopsis and they said, hey, if you, if you, you know, if you have something else, you know, feel free to send it to us. They didn't sign her, but they expressed an interest at looking at her work. So just, that was just built, built by the fact that she was in the same writer's group as this woman. So that's, that is one way you can, you, you can do that. Uh, I also suggest that if, if people are really serious about their writing, invest in, in going to a consultant and really getting your material read by a professional. Uh, and there's so many people that specialize, and that's what's great, because if you have something that, uh, you know, before it used to just be a consultant, and maybe it was just for film, but look for somebody who maybe has a specialty in television, 
or you know whatever your project is and look for someone that has those interests or who has developed material uh, along that line it, there are certain parameters I think that that uh, I, I know that as a consultant I don't feel I can do everything so sometimes there's if I if somebody contacts me and they say oh I've got this horror picture and I'm not a, you know I don't really I haven't done as many in the horror genre and if I don't feel I can um, give them exactly what they want I'm very good about recommending some of my other consultants friends who you know maybe would, would be better, a better fit but you know finding that right person uh, that you can consult with and help help you really restructure your your work well that's important and not to you know I, I remember that that uh, not long ago a lot of people said well yeah but you know I have my writers group or or uh, you know I have a cousin that that was an English major or whatever it is and yes the people like that are helpful but you want to get it from people who have either worked in the studios or have been in worked in production or have been with a producer uh, worked in television, whatever the whatever area that you're looking at, you know what is the what have they done, and it's important to do your due diligence. It's just part of investing in yourself and taking the time to research that. And I think a lot of writers don't because they're so eager. They just say, "Oh, okay," and they just Google consultants, and thirty-five thousand names are going to come out. You know, it's your due diligence to go through and check them all out. And to go, you know, and check out with other writers and find out. Go online and say, hey, you know, uh, I've got a script. It's a sci-fi. Anybody else have a sci-fi? And who, do you, who did you get as a consultant? And once you get a few names, run them through the ringer in, the, in Google and see who you get and who comes out on top. Uh, it's it, Word of mouth is so important. I do think that you sometimes people are really good at pitching and then they don't have the, the material to back them up and then we have conversely right we have writers who have great material but they have not spent enough time learning how to pitch that's a huge mistake uh, I you know you can do pitching things online you can do um, you can also go go to uh, like script fest um, there's a lot of other you know organizations that have I think there's virtual pitch fest too but there's a, and I'll give you listings for that one also but you can go to these these different areas and say hey you know uh, I want to learn more and sit in on the on the panels and the discussions and do some of the practice pitches and that's a lot of fun to do actually it's a, uh, I do a course in fact I'm doing one for the big break people where I'm gonna have them uh, pitch their projects to me and I'm going to pretend to you know be the studio exec and, oh, nice. and it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun I, I look at it as, as a, a good rehearsal for them because during the, the uh, event itself the awards event they're going to be sitting next to agents and producers and some of the people that could make or break their career